a very good morning sir welcome to advancing northeast and uh, before we introduce our guest of honor here uh, we would like to start with a little introduction about what advancing northeast is for our audience who uh, are not aware of our initiative yet so advancing northeast is a digital initiative of uh, northeastern council ministry of development of northeastern region government of india and northeast development finance corporation so it is a one stop solution tailor made for the youths of northeast in the field of education employment and entrepreneurship so the portal basically provides a space to the uh, students of northeast to connect with globally benchmarked professionals with different professionals working in different areas uh, to resolve their queries regarding career and livelihood so uh, to serve this very aim further we have our career talk segments and in our career talk segments we have this work abroad and study abroad segment and here we are with yet another episode of our work abroad and study abroad segment and uh, the guest we have today is navid ahmed model validation quant in quant institute deutsche bank berlin germany welcome sir it's a privilege to have you here thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and i'm looking forward to our discussion today yes sir so sir uh, why don't we start with a little introduction of you in your own words for our audience please sir okay uh, i'll start with my uh, basically i'll give you a background of my professional uh, journey so i started my career uh, with crisil uh, which is a credit rating agency in 2014 I started as a quantitative analyst, and there I worked for three years. And from there, uh, basically, I made a shift to J.P. Morgan, where I was working as an associate in model risk audit. And then I shifted to Deutsche Bank. I worked for Deutsche Bank India for two years, and then I got this opportunity in Berlin, in the Quant Institute, and I made a shift from Mumbai to Berlin. and okay, throughout so. my career i have been involved in the model risk management uh, division of the bank it is part of risk management and mostly we deal with models different kind of models that the bank uses for estimating revenue for time series forecasting you know and uh, different different uh, different different uh, use cases and we basically have to assess the risk uh, that come out of this models because of the usage the models should not be used for a purpose which is uh, which is not its intention and a model can also be used incorrectly so these are the two kinds of risk that we try to resolve by looking at the model how it is functioning whether it has been built correctly or not whether the mathematical concepts based on which the model uh, forecast or estimates uh, its output those have been properly implemented in the model or not okay sir uh, so lots of experiences in your uh, after your working uh, career you know started sir so before that sir uh, about your school graduation post graduation what led to your career choice here your okay. journey so uh, basically um, as you know i originally hail from guwahati and i was um, basically i i studied in a boarding school from class 7 to 10 uh, this school was in delhi and it's called it, uh, it was called csk in public school colonel satsangis kiran memorial public school from there i passed my class 10th and then for my 11th and 12th i went to dps rk puram where i had science with economics this is where my journey with economics started and uh, it was actually on my father's advice uh, he was also an economics post graduate and then uh, basically when i was studying economics i got to know about consumer behavior firm behavior market structure trade basically what i could figure out was that i could understand the society and the world a lot better through the lens of economics you know and that's why i initially got uh, basically interested in economics then i went on to do my graduation in economics from ramjas college delhi university and then i did my post graduation from madras school of economics okay sir so after economics sir you uh, became a quantitative analyst correct me if i am wrong sir so can you no, no, uh, sorry, just sorry. break down uh, a little about what it actually is because not many students are aware of this area of interest 
being a qualitative <clears throat> analyst yes so basically while i was doing my masters i got my first break uh, in crisil because of my background in economics what crisil was looking for was uh, were people who basically had good programming skills and as well as good uh, economics uh, knowledge they wanted to build models uh, of different economic variables and the independent and dependent variables of these models were basically macroeconomic variables and an economist perfectly understands how different macroeconomic variables are generated as well as their interaction between each other you know so uh, that was how i go got into this field of quantitative uh, analyst now what a quantitative analyst does a quantitative analyst basically tries to build models which predict the behavior of different um, entities so i'll give you an example my first project was to build um, a time series model for corporate um, corporate spread a corporate spread is the difference between uh, what a corporate pays to raise debt in the market minus the risk free interest rate that is the spread so we were modeling um, corporate spread and the independent variables were macroeconomic variables like volatility index unemployment etc so how uh would we were trying to predict how would the behavior of corporate spread change in the future because of these macroeconomic variables by looking at their behavior and their relationship in the past we will build a model that will predict how these uh, how the corporate spread would change because of a change in unemployment or a volatility index so this is what a quantitative um, analyst does it's a uh, basically in the job a lot of um, mathematics uh, is required a lot of uh, programming skills is required as well as economic skills is required because we are dealing with data of macroeconomic variables we need to know what uh, what they are we need to understand what the impact of a one macroeconomic variable is on other so these are the host of uh, you know skills that you require to basically get a job in the quantitative field quantitative field okay sir so uh, arts background or commerce background students cannot really opt for this field no no sorry, it's not like economics that. yeah except economics other backgrounds so uh, the preference is for people who have a quantitative background uh, uh, in my field basically in my office i'm 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 an economics graduate i'm working with people who have a statistical phd who have a mathematics phd as well as a physics phd okay. now uh, basically uh, the in the field this field is basically known as quantitative finance there is something called financial engineering as well basically uh, so the preference is for people who have a highly quantitative background because they are more at ease to deal with the problems which uh, arise day to day yes sir but people from commerce background have also entered it um, after basically uh, filling up the gaps that are required <laughs> the skills that are required but a minimum so, level of skills in the uh, in mathematics statistics and programming is required to enter this field okay sir so sir uh, uh, what kind of certifications are necessary to enter the financial sector yes that's a very important question because uh, normally what happens is uh, when you go into the financial field you may not end up in a, a role that you prefer so you would like a, a move to a more quantitative field or a less quantitative field you would like a front end role where negotiation and communication is more important you know but to get into this field <clears throat> there are two main certifications which are uh, basically uh, widely renowned and i'll tell you about the third one also which is gaining momentum the first is the cfa uh, now if you are even an engineer or someone working in the it field or a non finance field to get into the financial field uh, if you basically get the cfa charter then it becomes way easier for you uh, uh, to clear the interviews now the field that i am in uh, basically ba basically deals with a lot of quantitative stuff uh, derivatives you know uh, risk management for that there is another certification called frm financial risk manager which is uh, basically provided by gap global association of risk professionals it is an american uh, association 
so uh, financial if you get uh, there are two exams which are held and if you get the financial uh, risk manager certification it becomes easier for you to go into the quantitative field and another uh, upcoming area which is gaining a lot of momentum is climate risk you know a lot of models have been built to basically estimate how our carbon footprints are affecting the environment and this is there are a lot of regulations which are coming into place which the banks have to comply with you know and they are building these models and for the uh, climate risk there is another certification by um, garp itself and that basically deals with modeling uh, these climate risk models and all that so that is something which is upcoming and people can look into that because even banks in india are recruiting um, a lot of professionals who have that certification who have that knowledge in the field of climate risk and it's going to uh, uh, become bigger and bigger with time yes sir sir uh, you could maybe send us the links so that we can add them up later when Absolutely. we up, uh, upload our videos I'll, it I'll will be beneficial for our students and the audience yes sir Absolutely. so sir about your uh, journey in the international institute in the quant institute how did you end up working there what kind of research went through the entire process of getting there from here so basically like you know i've always been involved in this uh, model uh, risk background initially my first job uh, required me to build such models now in my in crisil now in my second job i was in uh, i was an associate in the model risk audit department the audit department basically looks at the process bank and whether all the processes are in place for the proper functioning and building of models the audit team in simple words basically looks at whether are the models built properly is proper documentation followed is the model put into production properly is ongoing monitoring of the models taking place properly or not that is what the audit uh, people do now then through linkedin and my connections i got to know about this opportunity in deutsche bank or uh, mumbai where they were looking for model validators a model validator's role is a little different a model validator basically and does an independent review of the models which are built by model developers so there is a group of model developers who build various kinds of financial models for the bank now a model validator will come and independently check the codes check the mathematical logic you know and check all the aspects of the model and will basically write a report whether the model is fit for use for the bank or not that's what a model validator does i was working uh, for basically uh, business revenue models of different lines of business of the bank back in india and then basically through my research i was looking at new avenues where models are used and applied by the bank i got to know about this anti financial crime division and basically what we do is we validate uh, transaction monitoring models of the bank uh, these models basically detect money laundering activities of the bank and it's a very new field and the banks are trying to come up with various new machine learning techniques to identify fraud and anti money laundering uh, and la money laundering and i ended up in germany to work for this division uh, which is uh, pretty new and upcoming Mm -hmm. so i would say that it's uh, basically what led me is my uh, networking uh, my curiosity to uh, keep uh, looking for something new this is a fairly new area to work in and uh, yeah and uh, with advancement in machines and technology uh, the ability of our institutes to identify um these uh, social evils like uh, you know uh, money laundering terror financing have to go up so that is uh, why we come in and uh, we look into the models which are identifying these sort of activities okay sir so uh, speaking about the institution what you are working in sir so uh, the it's just a basic question but what are the skills required primary skills that they look up for <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> uh so i will specifically answer this question from the quantitative finance background where uh, uh people uh, are recruited from from uh, people are recruited from different fields okay but the main skills a uh, uh, balance of uh, like the level playing playground which is applicable to all the people is that 
the people have to be skilled in programming. They, you need to learn languages uh, like R or Python. Then uh, your statistics, uh, they need a basic, a good, a good uh, level of statistics. And in statistics, especially probability, probability distributions, and inferential statistics, then they need a good uh, knowledge of mathematics. Mathematics, uh, mostly uh, linear algebra and uh, differential calculus. Okay, apart from this, they need a good business knowledge. You need to know how uh, different financial instruments, futures, options, how they are modeled, how their future value basically is modeled the Greeks related to options, how they interact over time, how they interact uh, over different, uh, you know, when different financial instruments uh, come together in a derivative contract. So these are the basic skills which are required at a good level for you to get into this field. Okay, so, so sir, uh, are there any opportunities that come, you know, springing up from your institute, that is from Deutsche Bank, if somebody no. particularly wants to work there, then? Yeah, more, uh, uh, if you, hmm. uh, more, the opportunities keep coming up and they are there in the company portal. You just need to basically filter the location and uh, there are lots of opportunities there which are basically highlighted in the portal. Uh, you need to check the Deutsche Bank uh, company portal. And uh, yes, and there are opportunities in LinkedIn as well. And yes, But sir. basically, LinkedIn redirects you to the company portal. You need to apply on the company portal. And then if, you, uh, if your skills match the skills that are required on the job, uh, you will be contacted. Okay, sir. So there is no particular test as such that they conduct to test your skills? There is a test. Or uh, any interview? Yes, twice a year there is a written exam which happens and there, where you can go there and write the written exam and if you basically uh, pass the minimum level of the written exam then you are uh, bas uh, basically interviewed there are two to three rounds of interviews which take place the first interview would be around your programming skills the second interview would be around the statistics then um, the machine learning concepts and the third would be around the business knowledge so two to three rounds of interviews take place and uh, based on that, uh, financial, uh, fin uh, the final selection happens. Okay, sir. So, sir, once you get into uh, this, you know, role, a job role, then uh, how do they go ahead after that, once they get into the role and then what <laughs> is the process? <laughs> That's a very good question, actually, uh, uh, because what I think is, uh, because of the dynamic nature that the world uh, is going through and technology and the world is changing rapidly uh, because we are interacting with each other. We are also interacting with machines, you know, uh, in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, models, machines. So there are a lot of skills which basically are required once you enter a job. The technical skills, I have already told you, you are aware about that. Those are the technical skills. But in order to uh, thrive in a workplace, uh, you require skills which are more than that and which are normally not taught in colleges. Like, you know, uh, like critical thinking, communication, negotiation, mm -hmm. you know, taking ownership of your work, persistence, resilience. You might not be having a good day, but you need to uh, at work, but you need to be calm and you need to be patient and uh, you need to know, you need to give yourself time to learn about the work place to learn about what is accepted what is not accepted in a work a workplace you need to be empathetic towards your co-workers you need to have a high level of emotional intelligence so these are the skills which are required in order for you to adapt and you know immerse yourself in the workplace and that's how you will interact with your peers and your seniors and you know go ahead in your uh, workplace Yes, sir. I think that is a very important uh, point because uh, once people get into the work role, then they start tackling with the difficulties and everything. So, yes, yes that and the difficulties may not be technical as such mm -hmm. all the time. You mm -hmm. need to under to be uh, involved in your workplace, you know, yes, and sir. those require mm -hmm. skill sets which are completely different from the bookish skill sets that uh, you incorporate while you are in college. In school. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, how has been your experience in uh, working there? How many years has it been and 
what are your working hours and everything so uh, i have it's just been a year for me but it's i would i would say that it's been quite uh, challenging for me to adapt to the new environment and challenging in the sense is that uh, basically you are out of your comfort zone when uh, when you go to a new country and uh, you interact with a, with people from very different cultures but that is the positive point you need to uh, basically uh, get used to being uncomfortable uh, and it uh, basically it's a great opportunity you know uh, to interact with so many smart people people from so many diverse cultures so right from the basic yes i i'll tell you i'll give you an example of something very basic you know you need to basically go and introduce yourself to someone and start a conversation that is something very basic but it takes you out of your comfort zone you know in india you have a certain level of familiarity with everyone around it's very, it becomes very easy for you to go and introduce yourself to anyone the context slightly changes in an international perspective but it uh, you basically ease into the ease into the role after a while and uh, you also uh, basically need to give yourself time to understand the similarities and dissimilarities between your culture and their culture so that you understand their working style and you understand uh, what they like what they don't like you know and in terms of uh, you know uh, the working hours the time is very flexible you need to put in your 8 hours but you need to put in your hard 8 hours where you are very professional and you get your work done but there is no restriction on uh, at what time of the day you would basically do that you know okay so uh, but, uh, so there, is, uh, uh, there is this uh, uh, business hours that you uh, that is preferred but mm -hmm. if for certain personal contingency you need to, uh, you know, change that a little, that is considered. So uh, basically, it's a very friendly and cooperative environment to work in. And uh, yes. Yes. Sir. So uh, are there any other Northeastern people working there? Uh, no, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Not, not, okay, no. sir. So you are the only one working there right now. That is also a matter of pride for all of us uh, sir another basic question uh, what is the financial uh, aspect like if uh, a student wants to you know take up that opportunity they apply and everything then what is the process of going from here to there so <clears throat> Uh, so basically, uh, if you're a student and you are going for a master's degree, then you need to apply for the workers visa, right? But uh, I see that there are lots of opportunities in Germany now for skilled uh, labor and especially IT professionals. You know, Berlin is uh, has become a start is a startup hub and an IT hub, and they have a lot of vacancies for engineers, especially from the software background, and. Uh, you know, according to a recent study, there are 1.74 million jobs which are vacant and they are looking for um, people from developing countries to go there and fill up those jobs. I have a lot of friends who have directly got a job there uh, from India and I have people, uh, friends from Assam as well who have got a job there. So you need to apply through these uh, work portals and everything but after clearing the interviews uh, I am not sure how different companies, how many rounds of interviews different companies set up but after clearing all the interviews what they give you is a work contract you know uh, which basically tells you the working conditions as well as the salary and they also give you a certificate which basically tells you whether the your highest qualification is at par with what a german university uh, is giving and if you have all these um, basically uh, uh, qualifications and uh, documents then you need to go for the visa uh, interview and there they also basically decide the kind of work permit that you will be given. The highest form of work permit is the blue card. Uh, if you are from an IT, finance, medical background, then the minimum salary that you need to have in order to qualify for the blue card is 55,000. Okay. And for non-financial uh, and for areas which are not related to this, it's a little higher. So the blue card is the highest form of work permit. It becomes easier later on for you to get the uh, residency permit and all that. 
so uh, the objective should be to get the blue card and uh, basically uh, these are the financial aspects and uh, yeah it should be uh, basically uh, easy from there on okay could sir. you give me a second please sure sure uh, <clears throat> moving ahead, sir, my next question would be, are there any uh, internship opportunities offered by Deutsche Bank? Yes, uh, uh, there are many internship opportunities and most of them are highlighted in uh, LinkedIn and uh, the job portal of Deutsche Bank in India. Uh, I think uh, the students need to go through uh, the job portal properly and there are internship opportunities which okay. are there. So, sir, they can also do, can they also do the, uh, it remotely, like students from Northeast uh, no, avail not an internship really opportunity there? For banks, so, that's not usually uh, uh, possible. Uh, you know? So, uh, that is another process where they need to go and work. Uh, yeah, because <clears throat> we are dealing with a lot of sensitive data that mm -hmm. mostly uh, has a high risk of, you know, leakage and mm -hmm. manipulation when people are working remotely. Okay. Another very basic question, sir. Uh, so if a student particularly wants to work uh, in banks like Deutsche Bank uh, or any other international institute as, as such, so what kind of preparation he needs to uh, do from the grassroots level, from the very beginning to get there? How did you prepare, sir? So it's 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 the same process. But the thing is, uh, what kind of area do you want to get into? Because a bank is a multinational corporation with lots of divisions. So people from even arts and commerce backgrounds have different departments where they can work for the bank. Specifically with my field, you need to basically, like I told you, have a, uh, have a good quantitative background, you know, where you have dealt with uh, complex mathematics and good programming skills. Nowadays, it's very easy to pick up programming skills because you have various... Uh, universities which are providing online courses but even if you don't want to spend the money youtube has a lot of courses where you can easily pick up python and r and even and all the knowledge that is required to excel is easily available on youtube because people have made a lot of videos on statistics you know on financial and derivative products so these are uh, a good level of uh, knowledge of financial products is required, statistics is required, economics is required, but you need to have a good uh, background and good theoretical concepts in all these subjects. They are related to each other. You need to have a sound knowledge in economics in order to understand the macroeconomic variables as well as how those macroeconomic variables affect financial products. You need to have mathematical knowledge in order to understand the uh, differential path that these financial products uh, future value will take so all these are related to each other and uh, you need to have uh, a good conceptual background in all these fields in order to okay, sir. so sir first the theory part needs to be uh, taken care of and after that for the interviews they need to take care of the personality factor right yes yes, yes okay definitely. so sir any uh journals or books or any websites links would you like to suggest so that we can put them up in our reference list for our students I, who are there are the lots list. actually but uh, uh, nowadays uh, specifically related to um, data science and data analysis i think in india there is uh, the analytics vidya then uh, uh, then there is uh, an app and uh, a website called Towards Data Science. These are very important. And uh, for quantitative finance, I have a few blogs that I follow. I'll share them with you. Okay. After this yeah. That would be really helpful for the students. So, sir, I think we have already covered almost everything that was, you know, crucial and important. And uh, any, uh, lastly, any words of advice and suggestion for whoever are enthusiastic about studying and working abroad? Yes, yes, uh, because uh, I I feel uh, closely connected to this cause because I was at their situation. 
a few years back. So I know what kind of struggle and uh, they are going through. Firstly, uh, I would like to tell them that, you know, you need to believe in yourself and be ambitious, you know, uh, in order to uh, reach a certain position in uh, life. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'm still trying my uh, trying and trying to improve myself daily. And that's what they also need to do. We are in a basically in an environment of learning and unlearning. You need to keep learning new skills and you need to keep unlearning whatever you've been taught, you know. And uh, so uh, that is what I'd like to tell them that, you know, be curious and keep learning. And that's how... Uh, one day you're going to be there where what you've dreamt of yes a wonderful wonderful for words help, uh, and for any help i'm always there i've shared my linkedin profile with you if anyone wants to get in touch with me directly please contact me through my linkedin profile i'd be more than willing to help and provide guidance of whatever i know yes sir thank you so much i'm sure everyone would be pushed uh, you know to work further and uh, you know they are very every information you gave was very 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 helpful for them today and you share all the details and i'll put them up in our social media handles and everything so okay so that they can connect with you sir lastly any say on our initiative advancing northeast what do you think about it i think it's a very good initiative i was going through your website and the way you have listed out the colleges and what a person needs to be done uh, what a person needs to do in order to enter a certain field. I think uh, you've given a very structured approach to people who uh, do not have, you know, the right kind of guidance, maybe. And I think it's a very, very good initiative. And I didn't have it, uh, have it at, uh, at, uh, at, at the time I was starting my career. And I was lucky that I had a few mentors and guides who basically gave me the right path. But this website is a one-stop platform, which which is acting like a mentor to lots of people. And I think it's going to be very beneficial to the students of Northeast. And they are going to uh, get a lot of help from it. And uh, I, this, 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 is a, uh, this is a good stepping stone for people to start their research. And then they can go on and do secondary research from there on. But I think to get the first step uh, into what goes behind uh, researching and developing yourself for different fields this is a very good platform and i commend you for all your hard work and i hope uh, you guys uh, keep doing the good work that you are doing thank you thank you so much sir it was wonderful having you here and for our audience you can connect with our expert through us you need to just connect with us and we'll uh, uh, let you connect with our mentor and expert here thank you thank you so much sir thank you